A lot of audio interfaces have multiple inputs and outputs, and that is something that you might want to take advantage of. I'm going to show you today in Ableton Live 10 how to configure your audio ins and outs. When you first open Ableton Live 10, you might notice that there is no sound coming from your speakers. And how do I know that? Well, if I drag a sample and I hit the play button, nothing happens. You can also spot this by looking on the lower left side corner, which says the audio engine is off. Please click here to choose an audio device from Live's audio preferences. If you're on Windows, in order to access the Preference tab, you need to go to Options and click the Preference tab. On Mac, I think you have to click on File and then click on Preferences. And if you want the fastest way to access Preferences, just click on Control and Comma, which opens the Preference tab. Now you will see that on the left side we have a lot of options, which we're not going to get into this video. But the one that we're interested in is the Audio option. The audio option allows us to select a driver type. You see that right now we have no audio selected. I can choose between MME DirectX and ACO. Some of you might not see the ACO option and that's okay. But I recommend that you download it. Why? Because ADO offers low latency. That is something that you want when you're producing music. The easiest and fastest way to download the ACO drivers is simply navigating to acio4o.org or perform a Google search writing ACO4O. Download the drivers, restart Ableton and come back to this video. Now, clicking on the ACO tab will bring a new option which says audio device. And the audio device allows me to select either a audio device or an external audio device in order to produce and record music. Now this drop down menu is going to be different for everyone because it depends on the drivers that you've downloaded for each device and it depends on the devices that you're using. For example, ACO for O version 2, that is something that all of you will see, but Ogent USB audio ACO driver, that is something that you're only going to see if you own an Ogent external audio interface. The same goes for M-Audio M-Track 2x2. Now there are also some other applications, some other software that such as voice meter, which you can use to reroute sounds in your computer. Clicking on ACO brings us a lot of options, but the one that we are interested in is the channel configuration input and output. Let's see how that works. Click on the input config you see that a new tab appears and this is where you can highlight the available inputs that your audio device has. You can choose between mono inputs and you can choose between stereo inputs. Simply highlight the ones that you're going to use and if you want to take it a step further, you can even rename them. For example, stereo input 1 and 2 can be stereo mic 1 or mono input 3 can be mb 3 player and mono input 4 can be acoustic guitar then hit on ok next you also want to configure your output config simply click on the output section and i've already configured it as you can see stereo output 1 and 2 goes to speaker set 1 and stereo output 3 and 4 goes to speaker set 2 now you may not want to rename all the inputs and outputs and that is fine because many of you will have only one or two inputs and you'll be using a variety of instruments for example you may record a guitar on input one and then plug another cable and record a bass and then plug the microphone and record the microphone so so it wouldn't make sense to give a name to your inputs but if you have a lot of inputs on your audio card, you may want to do that. Clicking on OK. Another important section is the hardware setup. Once you click on it, you're going to see the control panel of the ACO 4 o Here you have all the available audio devices that you can use. And again, this is going to be different depending on the audio devices that you have installed or that you're using on your computer. For example, the Rare Cortec High Definition Audio is my built-in sound card 
and my M audio M track two times two is my external audio card. I have more, but this is what I'm using on this laptop. So if you want to use either of them, simply highlight them. Then increase the buffer size if you want that. And close it. That is all there is to know about setting your inputs and outputs in Ableton Live 10. Leave a comment below if you have any questions and see you around.